Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. Today in this video we're looking at a case where I live, in Scotland. And it's just not in the town, the city where I live, it's in other cities and towns across Scotland. Now we all know this goes on, we all know about this trafficking, we all know about the sex trade, we all know about the DRUGS, we know about it all. But we te it's like we tend to turn a blind eye to it. And as I say in my title, if you see something, say something. If you see something going on suspiciously in a house next door to you, well, there's people coming and going, different people at different times of days. Right? Say something. Right? Because there's a lot of women, and I hope to God not children, I hope to God there's no children involved, who are being trafficked into the sex trade, right, against their will. They are bring, being brought in from other parts of the UK, even from abroad. All right, so if you see something, say something. We're going to watch a video first about about this. The police, can you open the door? Hold on, just make sure you can see this. Yes. Right. So, I don't know if I can get this bigger. Yes, I can. Right. So this was in a place in the town, in the city where I live. Not on my doorstep. It's a bit of a drive to there. I don't drive. So I don't know nothing about this area. I really don't. I've heard of it, but I don't believe. I might have gone through it in a car. I don't know. Anyway, I will talk about this in a minute, about the video itself in a minute. Let's just watch. Please. Can you come to the door, please? Otherwise, we'll have to force entry. Go to warrant. Officers are today building a bigger picture of the. So flipping polite. Please open the door. Uh, a bit slam, jaw open. You know what I mean? No, ah, oh, please, please open the door. What the hell? Come on, slam that door open. The extent of human trafficking and sexual exploitation across Dundee. It's a growing problem across Scotland. In the last six years, the number of victims of human trafficking identified has increased by 260%. The most common problem for us is persons being trafficked in uh, to work within the sex industry. And we have real concerns for the people involved, often against their will and often brought in from foreign countries for that. But it takes many forms and many different guises, uh, including uh, drug trade and including modern slavery, where people are brought in to work for wages way below uh, what they should get. Right now, he spoke about people being brought into work for, to do work for way below the pay and things like that. That is modern slavery. Right, it's been going on for years, years. Now, why the police, the government has not, uh, Doing something about this, I do not know. 
But you think I've been gone for years? Centuries. <laughs> I came back to before I was born. I where people were paid low wages to do long hours, especially in the manufacturing trade and things like that. So that was only a short video. Oh, young, I want to see. Well, let's see what it says about this. Oh, it says, Watch as police arrived home in human trafficking crackdown. In the last six years, the number of human trafficking victims in Scotland has increased by 260%. The last six years. Oh, who's been in government? Oh, yes, the SNP. Right? That is the Labour Party. Police in Dundee have taken a week of action aimed at disrupting organised crime groups. Officers targeted the house in the affluent Fairmore, Fairmore area of the city in connection with suspected human trafficking and sexual exploitation offences. Police say they are focused on disrupting the groups that exploit vulnerable men, women and children sexually, financially and emotionally. STV News, that's the, one of the main news stations here in the UK, joined officers for the raid in Fairview earlier this week. Now, I'm going to go to Google Maps and oh, Google Earth. Go to Google Earth. No, I won't go to Google Maps for this. Because as I said, this is in Dundee and I don't even know. I've heard of this place, but I've never... I don't even know how close it is to me. Right, so... And what was in place? Uh, what was it called? Fermio. Okay. Right, so let's just get rid of that. Now this is a fair mural. And where is it? Are you joking me? Are you flipping joking me? Alright. Uh, hang on, I'm just gonna put them there. Um, yeah. uh. Let's do it there. Do it that way, okay? And directions from there and my location. Right. Right. Black Fairmill Park. Hang on, I just want to make sure you're seeing this. Right, I'm going to make this larger for you. Right. Black Fairmill Park. Where do I, where's my... Oh my God, it's really, really close to where I... Why did I not know about this area? I don't... Call it Fermi. Can't be right. 
That cannot be right. Affluent area, thermal area of the city in connection. I wouldn't say it was affluent around there. <laughs> I really wouldn't. Right? I wouldn't say it's affluent man there. No way would I say it's affluent man there. <coughs> Maybe over this way, but that's Danfield. I did not realise that was fair meal. I did not. Just shows, and I've been living here since what? 2017, no, 2018, 2018, and I didn't know that was that area, <laughs> just so, but then again, I don't go to that area that often, right, I'm, I can't just like stick around here, or over this way, right, so I'm not going over here, I know it looks close, Right, but I want to say that was the affluent area. I need to know the name of the road. It just says affluent thermal area. Right, let's have a look. It says fair, fair, fair view. Right. What? What the hell? Uh, right, in fair view, uh, oh, I've got to put Dundee there, I don't know, I'm going to have to put Dundee. Yeah. Still doesn't help. Oh no. See, the, the more you get to the outskirts of Dundee, right here, then you get to like the houses and more of the countryside, right? That's a bit feel. I never thought that area was heavy. <laughs> never. Anyway, let's take that off. So, yeah, it's pretty close to where I live then. But as I said, I don't go in that area. I don't. I've gone through that area by car, by bus, but never actually. I think I walked through it mainly to get from, say, the Kingsway shopping area to get to a bus stop, maybe, and things like that, but I've never actually walked around the area itself, so, yeah, there are some nice houses up there, and I'm shocked it's going on up there, because there are some nice houses up there, on that road, but then as you get closer into the city, towards the city centre, that's when you get the build up, the, the um, flats above the shops and things like that. So, yeah, but when there, there are some nice houses, like, yes, I must admit. But I wouldn't say it's the affluent area. 
I really wouldn't. <laughs> it's amazing what people to see. Right? So, let's just get back to this. Officers targeted the house in the affluent Fermiel area in the city in connection with suspected human trafficking and S exploitation offences. Police say they are focused on disrupting the groups that exploit vulnerable men, women and children S financially and emotionally. Plain clothes officers were eventually let into the property. Yeah, I said. Open the door, please. We have a warrant. We will not knock your door down. But please open the door. In that time, they are getting rid of any evidence they have. Like flushing it down the toilet. Whatever, go back to D-R-U-G-S and it. it's gone. It's down the toilet, mate. Because you're being too flipping kind to so, say, um, Hello, can you let me in, please? This is the police. No, they've just got rid of all their evidence while, I wait, while you're waiting to let, for them to let you in. Oh my god. A specialist dog, police dog was also drafted in to sniff out any proof of exploitation. Evidence was later removed, but no one was arrested. Oh god, now. The operation was designed to build a bigger picture of the extent of human trafficking and S exploitation across Dundee. It's a growing problem across Scotland. In the last six years, the number of human trafficking victims in Scotland has increased by 260%, according to the organisation Survivors of Human Trafficking in Scotland, SOHTIS. Cases have been found in every local authority in Scotland. Yeah. There are an estimated 360,000 trafficked people in the UK. That's in the UK, not just in Scotland, not just in Scotland, but only 10% are found every year, the charity said. Detective Superintendent Ray Burney of Police Scotland said, the most common type of exploitation of crime for us is people being trafficked into work in the sex industry and with real concerns for the people involved, often against their will and often brought in from foreign countries. Hmm. By the boatloads, but it takes many forms, many guises, including in the DRUGS trade and including modern slavery, where people are brought into work for wages way below what they should get and are, and are exploited that way. Yeah, but that's been going on for centuries, what, well, years, years and years and years. That was going on when I was little. Victims found during the police action are being supported by navigators from this charity Justice and Care. The organisation helps victims of exploitation to rebuild their lives and support them through the justice process. So far this week, six properties across Tayside have been searched and 17 people have been arrested for various offences. And how many will actually go to trial and how many will actually get a sentence? Or will it be a... Oh, don't do that. A slap on the back and hanging. Don't do that again. Uh, I'll go for the second option. It'll be a slap on the hanging. Don't do that again. Because that's what the judges are like in Dundee. Detectives say disrupting the organised crime group behind human trafficking is complex. Yes, it is. So, hopefully, they've like done their homework. Before raiding these houses, hmm? and found out how these people were coming into the country. You know what I mean? Was it by sea, by air, by car, crossing over from England into Scotland? You know what I mean? How was they getting into the country? Um, how long this has been going on for. I hope they've done their flipping research on this. Because it'll just be a slap on the hand and don't do it again. They are urging anyone with suspicions to report this hidden crime as it could happen on anyone's doorstep. 
Yeah, it was happening on, well, I wouldn't say on my doorstep, but not far away from me. It's a good walking distance. It's a good walking distance, really is. I have walked it, but that was a few years back. And I did have a drink inside of me at by then. I, I believe I was in my, what, 50s, early 50s, 51. Yeah, about 50, 51, even younger. I've walked it. But as I said, I, I had a drink inside of me, so... And we was having a laugh on the way, so it doesn't, you, time tends to go a lot quicker. But... As I said, unless you live next door to anything like that, you see suspicious goings on, like people coming at different times of the day and everything. Like, I was watching something the other night, and it was about a murder of a young woman who was disabled. She couldn't walk very far, but she was drug dealing. She was dealing. And when they knocked on the neighbour's door, they go, oh, such and such, say her name. Yeah, she was dealing. They all knew what she was doing. All of them knew what she was doing. But not one of them ever. Ever reported it to the police. Now, perhaps if they had this woman, okay, she was doing the wrong thing, she shouldn't have been dealing, she should not, but she didn't deserve to lose her life. She wasn't capable of walking. She's that disabled. She used to use a walker, one of these walkers, and she never went out. She had shopping brought in. She had a, a, a um a worker go in to help her with bathing her and getting her washed and dressed and doing her certain meals. That's how bad she was, but she was dealing. Now, did that care worker who was going in not notice anything like that? Did she not notice anything around? Like, maybe D-R-U-G-S? sitting somewhere on the work surface because apparently they would just come in, knock the door and say, hi, it's such and such. okay, come in, it's on the side there. And they come in, take what they need and left the money. But this time, they, she got killed. Which was sad. Now, perhaps it's the neighbours who knew what was going on. People in the area knew her, not necessarily in the road where she lived, but in the area knew her. I knew what was going on, and no one ever reported it. Perhaps she would still be alive. So as I say, if you see something, say something. So that's that. But 260% rise in traffic, in trafficking, that's a lot. Now, there was another one, two women charged. There's been two women charged. Right, let's have a look for that one. I'm not even done data. That was somewhere else in Scotland. This was in Paisley, in Scotland. Down by Glasgow Way. My. <coughs> Let's just pull this up for you. Uh, these things. Uh, two have been charged with human trafficking in Paisley and brothel keeping. The arrest follow, uh, 
follow extensive inquiries into serious and organised crime in Paisley. Two women have been charged with exploitation offences in Paisley. Police Scotland carried out an intelligence-led operation yesterday, yesterday with colleagues from the Home Office Immigration. Now this is about a week old. All this information I'm telling you now is about a week old. Uh, two women aged 38 and 44 were arrested and charged in connection with human trafficking, brothel keeping and serious and organised crime offences in Paisley. They are due to appear at Sheriff's Court on Thursday, October 24. Right, now I'm going to put that in because not that we have open court TV here, we don't. As I said, we don't know about a lot of cases until it's, it's been to court and... We've got a lot of court cases to look at that week. I got Katrina Bella. Her court cases at 3 pm. This is October 24th. Uh, two women. At court. Right. It doesn't even give you a time. They don't give you time because they don't broadcast it in the UK. Uh, the, this follows an extensive inquiry into brothel keeping, human trafficking and serious and organised crime offences at premises in the Abercorn Street area of the town. Detective Sergeant jo Jason Buxton of the Renfrew Shore and Inverclyde Public Protection Proactive Unit said, We are committed to working with our partners to pursue those involved in this type of criminality, with strong focus on safeguarding individuals who may be at risk of exploitation. Right, we continue. This type of criminality can have long lasting and detrimental effects on people who are exploited while those who orchestrate this activity often benefit from the proceeds of this exploitative abuse. Information from people within our communities is key to helping us identify those involved. I would urge anyone with information or concerns about exploitation of any kind to contact Police Scotland on 101 or Crime Stoppers anonymously on 0800 555 So you can do it anonymously. You don't have to give your name. Right? So there's that one. And then there was another one I read. Uh, I'm trying to find you. Because it, I heard a sentiment. Oh, yeah. Third woman charged with running brothel and human trafficking in Scottstown. Let's see what this one has to say. Ah. Third woman, 37, charged with running brothel and human trafficking in Scottstown. A third one. So is this still in Paisley? I don't know. A third woman has been charged with allegedly running a brothel and human trafficking in Scottstown. Police previously carried out an operation alongside the Home Office Immigration Enforcement Team at three addresses in Paisley on Thursday, September 26th. So yes. Right, two women aged 38 and 44 were arrested following an extensive inquiry into alleged brothel keeping, human trafficking and involvement in serious and organised crime, said to occur at premises across the town. 
and yesterday a third woman was arrested and charged over alleged offences at a property on Abercorn Street. She is due to be at Paris the same day, Thursday the 24th of October. Do you think this is going to go any further? Is it going to go, right, you three, you've done this horrible. Oh, and I just hope there's no children. It's bad enough young women are being forced. But I hope to God there's not children. I really do. Right. We always say, right, you're going to court. This is going to trial. You'll be held. Uh, uh, you will be held until you go to trial. But knowing our luck, it'll be, yes, you're going to trial, but we will, you will be out on bail. Yes, yeah, so and I can carry on the dirty deeds. Yeah, I can. Or will it be, right, we know you shouldn't have done this, you've apologised, you've said this, you've done this, we'll just give you a little slap on the back of the hand and let you walk out of this court a free woman. What's the best song it being? Walking out the court, a free woman. Hmm? What's the best that no charges will be followed up? Hmm. I'm, glad, I'm, I'm going to be following this because this needs, charges need to be kept on them. They need to go to prison. And perhaps if they start putting these people in prison, it'll act as a detective. And not just for one or two years. For 20, 30 years, maybe. It'll act as a deterrent, maybe, for those who think, mm, is it worth doing this? Yes, we get some extra money, but is it really worth doing it? We could lose it all. We need to bring, highlight these cases more in the UK, across England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. It needs to be highlighted. Right. Our main priority is to ensure the safeguarding and well-being of vulnerable people affected and at risk of exploitation. With our partners, we will endeavour to make Renfrewshire and Inverclyde a hostile environment for any criminal activity and continue to strive to ensure it's a safe place for all. We'll see. Information from people within our communities remain key to helping us identify these involved. So you know, if it's in a house, you can spot activity going on at a house. You can, you see. Right? But where I live, it's, there are houses but I don't really see the houses. I walk past a few of them sometimes when I go to the shop, but it's mainly multis, what we call, what people in the UK call flats, high rise, right? So in a, in a multi, you don't actually see a lot of that going on. Like, I know when there's something illegal going on, like D-I-U-G-S wise, because Several times I've come to my block, I've got my fob out, which is like a special key to open the door. And there's been a guy waiting outside the block. And as I've opened the, front, out the block door, he's followed me in. So my keys automatically slip between my fingers. Right, I have them between my fingers. He then, just not getting one of the lifts, he'll go up the stairs because there's no cameras on the stairs. So they don't know what floor he's going to. So as soon as I see young people doing that, who are standing outside the block, waiting for them doors to open, I think, yep, you're up there to whatever. But I can't say anything because I don't know what floor they're going to. They could be going to floor one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Even 13, I know it's not happening on my floor, 14. But it could be any of these other floors. I don't know. Right? Now, the other day I went in my block and 
I said, come in. The bloke, there's one man now who is in, takes charge of overseeing the blocks, the multis, overseeing they're kept clean, that the doors are working, the lifts are working, and all that lot. One man. And there's one, two, in charge of four. And it wouldn't surprise me if he gets put up to the other three blocks further up from me. Right, but at the moment, he's in, he oversees four blocks. Four. And as he walked in behind me, I've gone up towards my lift. And he's walked past me and he's gone through the door. And as he opened the door, there's a guy standing there and he said, what are you doing? Why? So, obviously, there's a camera somewhere down there. I know there's one in the foyer, but there's obviously must be one at the bottom of the stairs or somewhere else. And he's obviously seeing it, something going on at the bottom of those stairs. And he's come over to see what was going on. And I heard this guy say, oh, I'm just doing a roll-up. It's a bit windy out there. And, you know, it's really hard to do a roll-up when you... Uh, no, it isn't that windy. I've just come in from out there. It wasn't that windy. <laughs> so they're doing something suspicious. And fair dues, that guy come across from the other block, walked across. And so because he's obviously seeing him and spoke to him, they then got their bags and walked out. Right? But fair dues on him. He's an old man as well, he's an older man, so they could have easily turned on him. Right? We just take a lot. But as I said, there's a lot goes on. I don't... There's a lot that goes on in this block. I know it goes on. I know it does. But I can't prove it. And I, because I don't know what floor it's on, I don't know what flat it's on. You know what I mean? I really don't know any of that. I just know it goes on. You just know it. By the suspicious behaviour of certain people hanging around outside and waiting for the doors to open. And sometimes they have this one side door wedged open. Right? Which takes you in the front way still, but past the foyer. So you're not getting caught on that camera at the foyer. But what they don't realise is that camera will catch them walking past this one little area which leads them to the stairs. So they're getting caught on camera. Either you come in the main doors or that side door, you're going to get caught on camera. Oh. But they do. Some, uh, if I see that side door wedged open, I'll go and unwedge it. I'll knock the block out of the way. Concrete block, piece of wood, can. You name it, I knock it out of the way. Because we are paying for the security on this block, for those doors to be shut at all times. And the only way you can get in is if you bust the flat number or if you've got a fob. Right? And I keep meaning to get another fob for my son. Because he has trouble getting into my block some days. If I, know, if I, don't, know he's not, if I don't know he's not coming and he's trying to surprise me, he has trouble getting in the block. Or if I'm not here and I'm away visiting my daughter, he can't get into the block. Right? And I go, you've got my father, use my father. Because I always give him my keys. But sometimes I don't give him my keys because I go home first now after coming home from my daughter's and then I go over to theirs. So he has got a key to get in my flat, but just not the fob. So I keep meaning to go and get him a fob. But it's hard when you're living a multi. You know it's going on. You just can't say where or who it is unless you live on that floor. All right? So, but if you live in a house and you see people coming and going, coming and going, And don't forget the sex trade works 24-7, all hours. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a dry throat. <coughs> bit of a dry throat. So, my word is, 
if you see something say something because you could be saving a woman's life a child's life or even if it's dealing with DRUGS you could be saving because they miss, mix these DRUGS and they mix them up you could be saving okay they're using drugs you could say well they're not all that innocent because they are using them but why did they start using them that's what you've got to look at why did these people start using the DRUGS right and they're mixing them with everything and anything which can kill people so if you know there's something going on something suspicious and you see something suspicious going on in a house down the road from you or across the road from you or next door to you report it anonymously you can do that well just google the number it will tell you the phone number anyway i'm gonna leave it at this if you like what you've heard and seen if you agree with what i've said Leave me a comment. Let me know your views. Until next time, stay safe, stay vigilant.